welcome back. Once again, Adventures to Let's Play Chaos Head. In the last episode, and I should <coughs> probably say the last couple of episodes, uh, things between Takmi and Sua have played out considerably differently um, thus far. Because I have managed to achieve the B route of uh, Chaos Head, instead of simply uh, impaling Takami with uh, the stakes that were used in the third New Gen incident, Mamoru Sua has decided to do something even more dastardly, which is uh, to subject Takami to the nightmarish hell of experiencing all seven New Gen crimes right from uh, the perspective of the victims themselves and this is because he is uh, incredibly upset over the fact that uh, over the fact of the loss of his uh, collaborator and partner in crime Shino Hazuki who uh, was also a fellow disciple of the Church of God's Divine Light And uh, that's exactly how the uh, last episodes played out, was uh, Takami enduring uh, the new gen madness from uh, a very unique perspective. But uh, unfortunately, not only did Takami experience the uh, events of the new generation madness from the perspective of all the victims in those crimes, he was also in forced to endure everything that they in, that they went through, including pain, and lots of it. But, uh, meanwhile now we're back, uh, I think we're back in reality, back in the uh, Shinsen train station. Inside the rucksack, Sewell Warren is back, his port played a strange mechanical sound. This is the, uh, Portable NOAA 2 terminal. As for Sua, he had long since grown completely accustomed to hearing it. And it was precisely because he'd had the sound that he'd been able to murder the heart of Takami Nishijo, a gigolomaniac. He uplifted an internal prayer of thanks to God for it. It was not God that made Noah too. It was uh, Genishi Nerose, although I suppose uh, in a sense he thinks of himself as God. Sua would never forgive Takami Nishijo. He dared to drive Hazuki to suicide. Hazuki, Sua's childhood friend with whom he had lived constantly ever since he was born. So that explains their connection, and I think uh, I'm right in the fact that uh, Hazuki did uh, give Sua Takami's private file, even though uh, on the surface it was against the rules of the hospital. But then again, considering Sua and Hazuki's true allegiance, it's a wonder that they went through such a charade to begin with. And of course, uh, yeah, given their allegiance, it's not surprising that the two of them were actually born and raised by uh, Inohara's uh, infamous cult. In the back of his head, Sua recalled what she had told him several years ago, at the time when he decided to aspire to be a police detective, she to be a nurse. Watashi. Both of their respective parents were followers of the Church of God's Light, and God and the Great Founder had been there for them since birth. And it's... Oh dear. 
Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Something tells me that I know the, uh, I, we now know who the father of that unfortunate fetus that was used in the second new gen crime was. Oh dear. It's just, uh, keeps getting better and worse all at once. Sura and Hazuki were raised together as children of the whole sect. It had also been the great founder's will that they bind themselves to one another. Can we say indoctrination, people? I think we can. And so the two of them obeyed their sect's teachings to the point of offering up the life of the child residing in Hazuki's belly. Yeah, I, I called it, and uh, I'm embarrassed to say it. Even now that Hazuki had reached martyrdom, he was convinced they had done the right thing all along. Indoctrination, brainwashing, manipulation, it's all there, it's all there. The Great Delusion of the World The Seven Incidents commonly known as the New Generation Madness Sewer and Hazuki had caused them together Although midway through, he gotten pretty panicked when his senior Yazu Jiban pointed out the contradictions in the group dive video yeah, funny that, how we figured, uh, how he'd managed to find the fact that a building had appeared out of nowhere, and, uh, that was somehow actually caught on camera, and yet, uh, it didn't quite work to Shogun's plan, because had it worked, there would have been no victims in the, uh, first New Generation incident. The video sewer upload Oh, okay. Let me just The video sewer uploaded to YouTube had been recorded by projecting his memories. But since some time had passed since the incident, parts of his memory had grown ambiguous. Ah So that's how it is. Sua transmitted his own memories into video, including the fact that uh, Shogun had manifested the other building, a building that normally in reality wouldn't be there at all. And unfortunately, Barn picked up on that. Unfortunately for Barn, the police weren't in interested in investigating that uh, particular discrepancy either. He didn't recall the exact details of the scenery, but since the video wouldn't seem very real without that sort of thing, he'd gone out of his way to look at the photos hanging in the lobby of Cornelius Tower. As a result, the video had become more realistic, but he'd picked the wrong picture to work from. Yeah, a building that hadn't existed uh, during the time of this incident. He certainly hadn't guessed that something would look so strikingly different between the tower's completion and the present. Then again, that too had been suppressed, thanks to the great founder's influence. Sewer would have issues with anyone who underestimated the power of the man who had founded the Church of God's Light. You mean like, um, Genishi Nerose? The man who would ultimately use uh, Noah II to murder Inohara, the leader of the Church of God's Light, as well as some um, the other guy, whose name I can't remember, and it doesn't matter anyway, because the two of them will eventually uh, kill themselves, and Genishi will take control of Noah II. Would you have issues with him, Mamoru Sua? 
Not that that matters either way, and I'm sorry for acting so incredibly snarky and sarcastic, and I apologize for feeling the way that, um, Alucard from Helsing Ultimate and Helsing Ultimate abridged here, but, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I, yeah, I think I know how Alucard from Helsing Ultimate feels right now, or at least, but I'm just rambling. He did government connections, and he'd even slipped several believers into the management at police headquarters. Yeah, that explains why, uh, Barnes' investigations were constantly being suppressed and ignored. I called it. Absolutely freaking called it. No matter how, how much the likes of Barn howled, it was only natural that he hadn't been able to do a thing about it. Yeah, it's called corruption at the highest levels of power. Well, power being the operative word here. Sua's op occupation as a detective, Hazuki's op occupation as a nurse. Not surprising given that Nozomi at this point in time controlled the actual hospital itself. Funny that. The support the, of the pressure the great founder put on the police and the media. The NOAA system terminal is provided by NOAA t Nozomi technology. Making full use of these things, both Sua and Hazuki had focused solely and intently on killing. As for the reason they had gone to such lengths to keep killing people, all of it was for the sake of pushing Takami Nishijo to a psychological limit. Never minding the fact that by doing so you are giving him the, abil the uh, ultimate power that he needs to undo everything that you've just worked so hard to build. Oy vey, these people, these people do not understand. This is what happens. This is what happens when you do stuff like this. It gets used against you. But I... I have to keep myself under control here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's just... Just so tempting. After they... After forcing him to awaken as a gigolomaniac, they would kidnap him and harvest his code sample. Alternatively, by cornering the Takami Nishijo who had been created by delusions, or from delusions, they would lure out the real Takami Nishijo, capture him, and harvest his code sample. Nip, avoiding the fact that there are typos in the sentence, obviously. That aside, Shogun, the real Takami Nishijo, has already uh, managed to slip through your fingers uh, multiple times before by hiding in the uh, in the hospital room in which it was confined all this time, and you guys can't reach it. <clears throat> but I digress. Real or a copy? As long it didn't matter as long as he was Takami Nishijo. Which is why Sewer had posed as Takami Nishijo using a wheelchair. Yep, that explains, uh, that explains Shogun. And that explains, uh, yeah, that actually explains a lot of things. It was the divine mandate that had been passed down to Sewer and Hazuki, and something they had to accomplish, no matter what sacrifices demanded of them in the bronze so why are you so angry at Takumi, if that is the case? Hazuki gave herself. Why are you so angry? Oy vey. And now, despite losing Hazuki, you had already overcome the tribulations set by God. Recollecting the face of the woman who had once loved him and whom he had loved in return, Sua had clenched his back teeth together as though withstanding grief. And next he walked up to Takami Nishijo, whose heart he had just slaughtered. <laughs> 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 
at the edge of the platform, Sena Ayoi embraced her father's head, which she herself had decapitated, then squatted on the tra upon the tracks. Her chest dyed crimson and her father's blood. She laughed. Jewel hung slackly from her mouth. Her eyes were unfocused. Yeah. I don't know about Takumi, but Senna's heart, however, and sanity have been uh, completely broken by Mamoru Sua. His mood having sobered, Sua gave her a glance. That girl's done for, he muttered inwardly. Whatever the case, he was through with her, and he didn't detect in much of a need to kill her. Out of the gigolomaniacs who had been gathered in Tokyo as part of Project Noah, there remained two whose code samples had yet to be taken. Excluding Yuanukus Noki, since she was an irregularity and no one had conceived of her being a gigolomaniac, that left Takumi Nishijo and Kozue Orihara. Must have surely been to the guidance of God's light that here and now the two had come tumbling into Sua's hands. Sua was grateful to heaven and the great founder for how his deeds were thus proven to be perfectly in the right. <laughs> That's not funny. It is absolutely not funny. Forgive my, uh, forgive my outburst there, adventurers. Um, trying, trying to keep a straight face here. There we go. Much better. Upon walking to, up to Takumi, he dropped to his knees, grabbed the slumping Takumi's upper arms and attempted to gra drag him upright. But Takumi had gone totally limp, rendering him incapable of standing. His heart had died utterly. Serves him right, Seward thought with a snort. They began walking off, dragging Takumi by the arm. Now we're here. Looks like Sue was ma able to take both the uh, Takumi and Kozue over to the planetarium. Kozupi is shouting something, like she's suffering, like she's hurting, like she's having fun. I blink my eyes. Where is Kozupi? He's fixed a weird place of art. Rimi's at her feet, all tied up. Also note the uh, lack of capitals there, but then again that's probably not surprising given the state of Takumi's mind right now. Something strange is about is strange about Kozupi. Her clothes are torn to pieces and a creepy crawling. Creepy crawling. What is? Her skin. Her thin skin is. Like on her cheeks, on her neck, on her arms. Around her belly button, on her thighs. Creepy crawling, groping and groping. Lots of somethings are wriggling under Kozpi's skin. Not just one, ten, twenty, around thirty. Even though it's a delusion, it's still terrifyingly real. Unfortunately, they must be parasites, gross little caterpillars. Kozupi <coughs> flails her head around, shake, shake. Her eyes are crazy. She's drooling, slobber, slobber. Her face looks really stupid, and it's kind of entertaining and she's wearing something on her head. 
Yeah, the same device that was worn on uh, Ayase and Senna's mother. Lots of cords stick out of it, like a toy, like a transform us into anything set. And there is the big cheese himself, Ganeshi Narose. An old guy I've never seen before. Who? Who indeed? Naruhodo. Muishkini Orihara Koseto Moso Shinkro Sasete Iruno Deska. Zuibun to Monozuki Desne. Well, that's not good. That explains uh, Takumi's uh, current state of mind. Because he's linked with uh, the delusion that Kozue herself is now uh, undergoing. As opposed to the torture Sua has already undergo made us undergo. I'm next? No way. Unfortunately, uh, we don't have a choice in the matter. I don't want suffering. I don't want pain. And we finally have capitals again. Looks like Takumi's sanity is slowly uh, repairing itself. Tuck. And there is a voice. A voice that is not Kozue Orihara. It is the voice of Rimi Sakihara. My wrists should have been bound by my back, but be, behind my back. But as if it had a will of its own, the cord loosened and fell away. Tied up, lying there, Rimi turned her gaze alone in my direction. Her eyes were pleading with me. The vast machinery letting out an eerie hum residing in state at the center of this dome-shaped space. This was Noah to itself. She was urging me to shatter it. And indeed we will, adventurers. Um, however, uh, we'll have to wait until the next episode. So when we return, adventurers, uh, Shall see how uh, Takumi Nichijo intends to uh, get out of this situation. But this time, he doesn't just have uh, Rimi and himself to save, he also has to rescue Kozue Orihara from Genishi's terrifying clutches. As always, adventurers, until next we meet. <laughs>